So my prediction for 2022, Jordan, I think Pentaxians are going to come around and join Chris team and Jordan. They're going to love us this year. They're going to change their tune. Uh, you're you're going to see this. Is going to happen. I think Rico would have to release a Pentax product for that to happen this year. And it would have to be something that actually excites you. Uh, where's my pen? I'm going to scratch that one out. All right. Welcome back to EPV TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. Cool. And Jordan Drake here. Trying to get a beverage down. And uh, it's 2022. Happy New Year to all of you. Uh, thank you so much. And we think this is going to be a great year going ahead. And this is going to be our prediction video. But a lot of people have already made their predictions. There's lots of rumor sites that, you know, have a lot of camera announcements that we basically know are going to happen or very solid. So we don't want to retread, you know, already walked on pathways. Yeah, exactly. We want to look at more the things that we suspect might happen, especially later in the year. Any kind of product announcements that have been pre-announced, we're going to disregard those ones yeah, as well. Just fun stuff that we think might happen. I think that 100 megapixel full frame sensor, that's kind of the new benchmark to break. And I think 2022 is the year they're gonna break it. Yeah, I mean, we've seen development announcements about these 100 megapixel chips before, but I really think it will be in a production camera. My question is, I think it's gonna be either Canon or Sony. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I think Canon's really kind of trying to prove themselves with their own developed sensors lately. But Sony just occasionally is just like, I'm just gonna drop something generations ahead of what everyone else <laughs> is doing and maybe they'll do that again this year. Now to be honest, I don't necessarily think it's gonna end up in a camera in 2022, but I hope that we actually have a sensor developed. I don't think it'll be stacked. But I just think the number alone is going to be the thing that maybe puts a bit of pressure on the large format cameras. I mean, I love the GFX 100 if I could have a full, full a lot of resolution. My next prediction is going to be a little video centric because I'm selfish. I really think that we are going to see an update on the Panasonic S1H, their flagship full frame hybrid mirrorless camera. That would make a lot of sense. I mean, we already know the Panasonic GH6 is gonna be coming out probably earlier in the year, but it'd be nice to see something come out later in the year. It just makes me wonder though, Panasonic is making great video cameras, but I don't know if we're gonna see any more photocentric cameras out of them this year or any year. I mean, I, from everyone that I'm talking to, it seems like the S1H is by far the best selling of yeah. the full frame L mount cameras. So I think they're really gonna double down on that. I think the GH6 is kind of gonna be a test bed for that camera. Um, what's interesting, we know the GH6 is going to have a stacked sensor. I would love to see an S1H body with a stacked sensor because, you know, high frame rate and the 4K60 crop and the rolling shutter are really the major downsides for that, unless you use autofocus, in which case that's a pretty <laughs> obvious one as well. Uh, but I do think they'll move in that direction uh, towards the end of the year. Like GH6 gets all the attention start of the year. S1, S2H. S2H? S2H, end yeah. of the year. Okay, so of course the Z9 was a big thing last year and you know, I'm six people out there are actually really enjoying that camera and there's a lot of reasons they're enjoying it, but the big splash is no mechanical shutter. And I really think that other camera manufacturers are gonna really follow suit. We're gonna see that become more and more prevalent in 2022. Yeah, I absolutely think like the shutterless camera is the future of photography. Mm -hmm. It's just, you look at the cameras that have those stacked sensors right now, you know, they're flagship expensive bodies, those sensors are, difficult to make, they're expensive to fabricate. Yeah. I really think that that is the direction it's gonna go. I think it might take a little longer than 2022 though before that it becomes more tough, mainstream. tough, right? I mean, there's so many supply issues right now and really it's not about taking out a shutter. It's not like that's really the big no, revelation. <laughs> the big revelation is can we get sensors that scan fast enough where you don't need to have a mechanical shutter? So, well, you know now you've got me on a downer note for 2022. I am optimistic, but I think that's too optimistic. It's not optimistic. All right, another video prediction. I think this year we're gonna see either Apple or Blackmagic give in, stop being so stubborn and support the other person's raw recording format. So that means either Apple would support Blackmagic Raw or DaVinci Resolve would support Apple's ProRes Raw. And we're seeing all the camera manufacturers pick and choose between these two formats. I think whichever editor allows the editing of both files will see a huge uptick in popularity. And I think one of them is gonna make that gamble this year. Okay, so you basically did the entire explanation there, but I do have two points I wanna make. First off, I had sushi tonight on that raw topic and it was lovely. Second thing, Apple give in and support somebody else's format? It's Apple we're talking about. Are you crazy? I mean, but, but remember, these are, I would say, the two most stubborn companies out there right now. I, yes, you could just edit your video on Adobe Premiere as long as you don't mind restarting the program every 10 minutes.
Now there's a lot of talk and rumors about Sony making an affordable camera to compete with, you know, like the Nikon Z5 and, you know, kind of bring people up into the full frame market affordably. But I think they will make an affordable full frame camera, but it's going to be aimed firmly at the vlog crew. Uh, you know, it's going to be for creators who want to do live streaming. It's going to have flippy screen, but it's going to give you the depth of field and image quality of a full frame chip. And this, I think, is going to be a full frame ZV-E10 because, honestly, I feel like Sony's kind of going to let their APS-C line going. It's already starting. Okay, I'm gonna give you this one. I think you're absolutely right. I think they will do Dude, an entry level full frame camera. I do think it's gonna be very vloggy centric. Right. What I really wanna talk about is you saying that you think they're gonna move away from APS-C because mm. if you've been paying attention to the news, they're like discontinuing like yeah. all of their APS-C cameras, including the ZB-10 that they just launched. So yeah. I think one of two things is gonna happen. Either, like you said, they're gonna move away from APS-C and just focus on full frame, or they're just like, those all have the same old sensor. We've got a hot new APS-C sensor yeah. and we're just gonna replace all of those cameras in the line with our new tech. What do you think? I could see them streamlining their lineup, having just a yeah. couple interesting APS-C cameras because it's a big ecosystem. There's so many third party lenses. They really invested in APS-C size lenses as well. So it'd be, it'd be tough to see them just drop it, mm -hmm. but I think they're gonna pare it way down. Another prediction for 2020, I really think that we're gonna see Canon's RF and Nikon Z mount starting to release a whole bunch of affordable consumer mid-range kind of lenses. So here's my reasoning here. I really think that they've been releasing all of these pro expensive lenses because Canon and Nikon are like, oh, we've got this R3 and this Z9 coming. We have mm -hmm. to have a full lens ecosystem for the pros for those. They've been rushing all those lenses out. Now that those cameras are on the market and they have pretty complete pro lens lineups, I think this is their chance to then start making some really interesting, affordable options like Canon doing, you know, a 16 millimeter full frame uh, that's very affordable. You know, Nikon's right. doing their 24 mil and their 40 mil. I'd love to see them keep going in that direction. Yes, really for a full frame yeah. ZFC, right? Could say, please do that. That's what I want for 2022. It's not going to happen, I don't think. But you know, that's an interesting point. And, I, and we were also talking earlier about how it'd be great to have like a, a line of lenses with slower apertures that are lightweight and affordable. I think a lot of people would appreciate that. But at the same time, I also still think like, what about Canon and Nikon having to make like professional wildlife telephotos yeah, strictly that. for that, right? I think we'll see some of that as well. But if your prediction is correct and we see like Sony move away from APS-C, if Canon like, moves away from M mount, then they're gonna need a lot mm. of entry level full frame stuff. And I think they're really gonna focus on that this year. Now, a lot of people are making prediction that 2022 is gonna be the end of the DSLR. And I think a big part of that is Canon's announcement that the EOS 1DX is gonna be their last professional flagship digital SLR ever. But all they're saying is that's the last flagship. They're not saying they're not gonna make more DSLRs. I honestly think they're gonna make a lot more. Okay, I don't think this is gonna be the kind of DSLRs that our viewers are gonna be excited about. I mean, it might be like a Rebel T9 or like a Nikon D3600 or something. Yeah, of course. I, I don't think the Pentax K13 is coming. <laughs> I think they're gonna bank that for a couple of years, hide that power a little right. bit. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, they've already been doing this for a couple of years, right? I mean, just incrementally improving SLRs with a couple new features, putting a new name on it. but. I feel like there's still a lot of parts. They're easy to make. And, you know, with supply shortages, I think DSLRs are still something they can easily produce. So I think we are going to see them uh, in the market. I think they'll come out and no one will care. Oh, man, you're such a downer. Okay, so Jordan's been a little pessimistic here so far in 2022, but I do think it's founded in a way because I think we are going to see this year watch a lot of lines kind of disappear or get streamlined or taken away. So I thought we'd play a little fun game to close things out a little. Should I stay or should I go with Jordan in a lightning round? Okay, ready? Yep. Okay, Sigma full frame cameras, FPL and Foveon sensors. I think they might be done. I don't know if that Foveon sensor is ever going to happen. Ooh. And I don't like them just using other people's sensors in their cameras. Oh it hasn't done well. All right. Canon EOS M, that whole system, much beloved. Uh, I think that's gonna go too. I think they're gonna wanna move people up to full frame. And I mean, it's a decent system, but it's largely because the good gonna, stuff Sigma was making. Are they gonna make APS-C sensors in an RF lens mount camera? I think they're gonna make a super cheap full frame RF mount. I don't know if they'll do APS-C, I don't yeah. think they will. Okay. Nikon APS-C, their Z mount APS-C. I think that's gonna stick around for a little while what? because they brought out the ZFC with it. I would like to see more custom lenses, but I mean, they've got a super zoom coming. I think they're invested in it. Okay, uh, GoPros. You know, everybody 
always says, like, my old GoPro is just fine. Why do I need to buy the new model? I think they'll hang on for a couple more years, but I think that whole action camera market is just Some collapsing. Like a, like a supernova, <laughs> right? Okay. Pentax. Pentax will live forever. They will soar like a phoenix. No, I, I think they're going to be the only guys making interesting DSLRs, and I think that's a really good niche for them. Like so a, I, I, like a C Pentax. All right, <laughs> soaring like a phoenix. <laughs> okay, lots of phoenixes. Okay. Yes. Um, and then Micro Four Thirds. I think what we're going to see this year, because we know there's stacked Micro Four Thirds sensors right. coming out. A lot of people haven't been able to use a stacked sensor interchangeable lens camera because there are all these crazy expensive things out there. I think having that at a lower price in Micro Four Thirds is going to make that system really compelling again. So I think Micro Four Thirds is going to see a big bump this year too. Yeah, I want to add on that because I think that's the one area where they can really integrate computational technology oh. and that would really breathe new life into that system. Okay, so you agree with everything I said? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, okay, I great. I mean, we did it. I just don't know about the Phoenix thing. Like, it could be an Icarus You'd prefer thing a different just, metaphor. I don't know. But, you know, actually, you know what? It was the one positive thing that you said out of this whole uh, talk tonight. So I, I appreciated that. All right. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed that. 2022 looks like a very interesting year. Jordan and I are going to take our show to new heights, as it were. Like a Phoenix. Oh, God. Yeah. Anyway, so... Thank you so much for joining us. If you don't agree with our predictions, please do comment below. Let us know what you think. And, you know, we were kind of getting talking about dynamic duos and stuff like that, you know, like Batman, Robin. Well, we know who's Batman and who's Robin, right, Chum? Debatable. Okay, but also Monster Zank. Jordan thinks he's uh, Mike Wazowski and I'd be Sully, but I think it's reversed. I don't know. Like, we're disagreeing about it. So let us know so you can solve that uh, debate for us. And uh, otherwise, as always, check out dpreview.com. There's going to be fantastic articles. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing to our channel. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. We shall see you soon in 2022.